Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about this camera, the Sony a6400, and how we set it up for our YouTube and vlogging purposes. So this camera is amazing, especially when you factor in the price of this thing, and we use it extensively for our YouTube content. It makes a great long form camera as well as a great vlogging camera with its flip screen as well as its unlimited 4K recording. But complicated menus can get the best out of any camera, so I'm gonna show you how I set up this camera to simplify the whole process. So first, I'm just gonna flash up all of my custom menus, so you can pause if you like and copy it all down. And before I get into some specific scenarios, I just wanna talk about some general settings that you aren't gonna find in the custom menus. So first off, we shoot with the HLG profile shown here. This is a great profile to shoot in all types of lighting conditions because you get great colors, great dynamic range with relatively little impact on low light performance. We also shoot RAW plus JPEG so that we get the benefits of RAW processing if we need it, but we can also Wi-Fi transfer JPEGs really easily to our phones. We also use continuous autofocus all the time with these cameras with the autofocus activated using the shutter button. And we also use the shutter button to initiate recording on this camera since we really don't like the little button on the thumb grip here. All right, so instead of going through the custom menus one by one, let's just go through some specific use cases and demonstrate this custom setup. All right, so in terms of changing the main settings on this camera, I just have this top dial here set to shutter speed since I typically change that more often than I do change aperture. Aperture is changed by this bottom dial here which is slightly less ergonomic to get to. So that's why I have that setting changed on this dial instead of this one. Um, ISO is on the right button here, so we can get to that really easily, change our ISO around. We got our down button that brings up our white balance. So we can go from auto to daylight and then up to Kelvin right there. And then we also have C2, which brings up our exposure comp if we're using auto ISO or something like that. Um, which we do quite a bit of the time when we're on a 6400. I typically find that plus one is the best for auto exposure on this camera, so I usually have it set to that. In terms of video settings, so just like the a7 III and a7R III, I don't typically use the actual video settings on the dial. Instead, I save my video settings to memory recall modes, so I can go to MR here and we have three slots, basically having 4K in manual video mode in slot one, we have 120 frames a second in manual mode in slot two. And then we have our shutter priority 4K recording in slot three. And slot three is basically like my vlogging mode. So the camera can auto expose for a lot of different situations. Um, usually ISO auto as well with auto white balance. And it just gives me a really capable camera that can record good looking footage in a variety of situations. In terms of autofocus modes, I typically have these cameras set up for zone AF area as well as having face detection on. And if I ever wanna select something to track focus, I can just touch the screen. It's gonna bring up my tracking focus. And as you can see, that's just gonna follow that object around the whole screen. It works really well for objects or people. And of course, it'll switch to face detect if it detects a face within that tracked subject. However, if you're shooting slow motion or shooting proxies, it will always disable the face detection and your touch to track won't work anymore. So I typically just keep it on zone AF area and just use the camera like that. To get into manual focus, just click the AEL button once and that's gonna to toggle the manual focus on. So of course I can adjust my focus now using the lens and C1, which is on the top here by the shutter button, clicking that twice will magnify the image so I can make sure I, I am sharp on my subject and of course, hitting AEL will bring us back to autofocus. And to get to your audio levels, just go up to this AF MF switch button. So if I click that, it brings up these audio record levels and I can adjust for different scenarios. In terms of photography though, if we switch back to M, so I typically keep the camera on medium spot in terms of focus area. Um, to change this around, I have this center button set up for that. So I click it once, and now I can use the D-pad to move the AF area around, or I can just use the touch screen on the back here to change those. 
And then when I'm done, I can hit center again and it locks it in. And then my D-pad becomes my custom buttons like I showed you before. We can also do touch to track in photo mode as well. So I can just touch that cup and have it track around the screen like that, which is always handy. And this AF MF button, if we click that, it's gonna bring up our face priority in AF. So I usually just keep it on because when I use this camera to take photos, it's generally in a you know casual family setting. So keeping face priority on is generally a good thing. All right, to get to time-lapse modes, we can go into the function menu and go over to time-lapse, which is up here. And if we turn that on, it's gonna, just gonna put the camera right into time-lapse mode. Generally, I'm gonna put the camera into aperture priority. And I usually just have the camera set up in silent shutter so that um, the camera doesn't make any noise when it does time lapses, which is always really nice. And if I ever wanna change any of the interval settings or anything like that, I can just go to menu and the interval shoot function is gonna be right there. So I can just change all of these settings anytime I want. And similar to that, if you are ever vlogging on a sunny day and you can't see the screen because of the glare from the sun, um, you can go into menu, go over to monitor brightness, you can select this and then go to sunny weather mode and that's just gonna brighten the screen up and give it a lot more contrast so you can see it in really harsh conditions. All right guys, hopefully you found this video useful. As I said, this camera is amazing and we use it all the time for our video productions, especially for the price, this camera is an absolute beast. If you have any questions about anything at all, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and I'll do my absolute best to answer it. I really feel like this setup is best for us and our needs. However, your needs may vary, so feel free to modify it however you see fit. Also, if you guys like this video, please consider subscribing to see more tutorials and gear videos. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys in the next one.